Hi, and thank you for tuning in to Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. And what I have for you today is a JL Audio 800 by one amplifier. It's a revision two board, as you probably can see down here. And uh, this board came in uh, with no output FETs installed it seemed to be without the FETs it seemed to be functional I had low side drive um, I didn't have a full low side drive but I had a, a good enough drive on the low side to get a good idea of the status of the drive card uh, to be able to put in uh, some transistors so what I used was the IRFB4227 transistors in this amplifier, which work really well in the output. Uh, since I did not have the original output transistors uh, to begin with, so I did a close match of what I could uh, that worked the best. And I have found the 4227s to work really well with it. Uh, so upon initial installation of the 4227s firing up the drive board, I was struggling with the signal uh, on this board before realizing that the RCA inputs uses a what I call a floating ground on the input side and not the slave side. The slave side RCA jacks are connected to chassis ground but the input side is not connected to chassis ground. So as I was putting this amplifier together and testing the output with the four 227s I was getting a output signal like what you see on the scope and I was like hmm that is not correct but then what as well actually what I was doing is I was tracing back uh, the grounds of the shields of the RCA's and then realized oh it is a floating ground looking for the head unit ground so if you ground uh, the RCA like it would be through a head unit if you ground the RCA shield to the head unit ground because your RCA's are grounded through the head unit you will get a perfectly clean signal on the output so any technicians out there that see that mess uh, not realizing that they have a floating ground here when they're using an isolated power supply like I am uh, you need to remember to ground your input kind of like on some of the old pioneer amplifiers too any of them that use that isolated RCA shield uh, you need to remember to ground that shield that to come into your power supply uh, when you're using uh, an isolated power supply so I hope that helps clear up any confusions on when you see a good signal versus a bad signal on a JL amplifier um, remember to ground your RCA shield otherwise the drive card is in perfect condition uh, you the three uh, power supply lights come on your remote LED comes on all your four other LEDs stay off the one thing I will say about this drive car that I don't like is when they use this uh, LED here it's so dim some people think that there's a short in the drive card um, which is incorrect on that there's no short in this drive card as you can see on the scope we do have that uh, 
uh, 50 hertz output with my 50 hertz input. So if you have any questions, uh, please let me know. Uh, I do thank you for watching. If you like the uh, repair content, please like and subscribe. I will try to release videos as much as I can to help guide any repairs on common amplifier boards. I do have a new website up, ellensburgamplifier.com, where I list uh, any personally owned amps that I repair for uh, videos. Again, thank you for watching. Catch you on the next one.